Welcome back to the Ribbon Candy Hooking Channel. Tonight we're doing some late night dyeing, a little bit of dyeing. We need to color some more of the purple um, wool that we had in the, that we do have in the Conversation Hearts February kit for our group. And I ran out of just the purple. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to recreate that purple. And I don't really know, it was a um, door mill wool that I had. So we're gonna try to recreate it using some of the purples that we have around. And I'm gonna just show you some of the basic things about dyeing because we do this a lot, dyeing wool and dyeing yarn, um, particularly for our kits. And there's a lot to it, but it can be condensed. And we are a bit, um, I don't know what the right word is, but we, we skip some steps and it still comes out great <laughs> every time. So we'll talk about what the most important things are that we need. We're scattered at best. Um, the most important things that we need. So what we really need, we've got the wool. I've already cut the wool up. Um, this is wool straight from the bolt. We've got nice door wool from the bolt, just plain, unbleached, on everything. And I just cut it into 12 inch strips and ripped as we went. I just cut maybe, what do we do, like eight of these or 10 of these? Yeah, 10 of them. Um, the reason I cut them into 12 inch strips is because I make kits. And I only know from cutting them 12 right across the bolt that I, I know how many of those it takes to do each kit, to do each part of every kit. So I go in 12 inches. So that's the reason I cut it in 12. So you can cut it however you want. But one of my first questions when we started dyeing was how big of a pan or sort of receptacle are you going to need to do solid colors, not modeled colors, not painted colors, but just solid colors. And the answer is just a big pot is big enough. Um, we'll show you the pots in just a second. We've got a giant, like, baby's, like a hip bath type thing, a baby's bath here, an enamel pan. And we use that. It goes in flatter. But even when we dye in just a big lobster pot, that works too. So we've got our wool all cut up, and it's been soaking for about half an hour in the tub. Um, just soak, soak, soak. With vinegar. Now, with vinegar. So we put vinegar in at that point. A lot of people put, a, put in a wedding agent, like, what's that stuff called? Synthropol. Synthropol. So we don't do that. We should do that. And maybe next time we will do that. I've never had any adverse effects to what we've made. Um, some people use like soap, like Dove, Ivory, that kind of thing. But um, we, our wedding agent so far has just been vinegar. And our, I love our colors. They've come out exactly how I've expected them to. Um, and lasted, not rubbed off, no extra um, bleeding or anything like that. So we just do vinegar and a wet bath for at least a half an hour in the shower. Just leave it on these Tupperware things. Vinegar and water. Vinegar and water. So some of the other things we need, obviously, are these are spoons. And we use the same ones over and over because even though they're dyed and colored, it, it does not come off again. Like, it's it's just permanently colored and stained and pretty. Um, I tend to use dark ones with dark colors and light ones with light colors. But it never bleeds. It never comes off. We've never had an issue with that. Um, some of our other supplies, here's our vinegar, just the white vinegar, because if you use a different color vinegar, it's, it might change the color effect, right? It might change the color of the dye. So definitely white vinegar. Um, people also use citric acid crystals, um, and I think we should order some of those and try that too. The, the main reason, from what I understand, of people who use citric acid, acid crystals instead of uh, white vinegar is it's, it's smaller. It's a space saver. It's ti a tiny amount that you use. It comes in a tiny container super intense and powerful, just takes up less space if you have a small kitchen and you're doing, your, your dyeing shop is your kitchen. Um, if you have a designated space, then just, you know, vinegar it up, uh, but we don't. So we could definitely use the citric acid crystals. And then we've got our dyes. So we have like hundreds of Cushing dyes, uh, and we go to these a lot because I know what the expectation is with the colors. Um, there's no more swatches for our Cushing, so unless you happen to have some from years ago, you're very lucky. We don't have swatches for Cushing, so we are constantly consulting the internet. Um, but we have a lot of our Cushing dyes, and then we have our acid dyes that I order off Etsy. These are really nice dyes. I have a color chart for these. These are available in a lot of places. And what I like about um, these acid dyes, um, they come different names, different whatever, but the thing that they'll have in common, this is Wash Fast Acid Dye. I got these off Etsy. These are in rug hooking stores. We were in Connecticut at the... Uh, Whispering, Whispering Hills, Hills. Farms. sometimes I say Pines, Whispering Hills Farms, um, and I got this card there, so they still have more of these and all of the dyes and then some, but you know, you're able to really see what the color actually is, and what I like about these colors over the Cushing <clears throat> is the brightness, so yeah, Cushing does like a hot pink, like a neon, a neon pink now, but there's just a lot of neon uh, value colors here, um, the yellow, the blue, the very hot pinks, 
Um, these are ones, you know, the, the cushion ones are so beautiful, soft, mellow, traditional, but some of the other brands, uh, acid brands, um, have these really bright colors with a more of a neon quality. So it just depends on what you're looking for and you can mix them in the same bath. Like we did a yellow cushing, like a butt, I think we did buttercup the other day. And then we threw in one of these really bright ones cause it wasn't quite bright enough for the candy hearts in the kit. And it came out perfect. If you have the kit, you know, it came out perfect. It was the best color uh, we had. So that was a blend of the two kinds of dyes. We do measure our dyes. What do you call it? What do you call this Jigger. when you, Okay, a jigger. See, that's a, for me a cocktail measure, but I guess it is Jigger, what it is. Yeah. Um, it's got, we're super technical. We do big side, little side, and I record yeah. in our recipes how many of each side we did. Um, if you are trying to match a color you've done before, you need to be very precise and serious. You can't fool around the way that we often fool around in here, just doing colors and trying to get close just for fun. We do things to put into a kit, and then we would have to be precise if we were trying to replicate it. But if I'm just doing colors for fun to work with or to sell or bundle or whatever, um, I'm not that precise. We just record what we're doing in case we love the color. Um, big side, little side. There's very tiny amounts here. This is a teeny, weensy little amount. Um, and then we've got our thermometer that, um, what, what temperature do you usually look for? 155. When, okay, so he puts this part in the pot, and I'll show you that in a minute. It hooks right onto the edge of the pot. Uh, 155 mm -hmm. is the right temperature for the dye to set. So I'm going to show you what we're doing when we actually, yeah, and we use the measuring cup too. So we know how many gallons of water we've put into our pan. We're using our enamel yeah, tub right now. And the, we'll show that part, the pre-pan. Yeah. We mix our color in one pan and then we pour it into the dyeing pan. So we, we do measure it so that I can keep an accurate record of what our recipe is if we love it. But if you're just fooling around and you're doing this for fun, just do it for fun and don't like weigh yourself down too much with details. If you're just starting out with dyeing, just do it for fun. Make sure you get the temperatures right. So your color is set well and you get the best possible effect and it's not going to bleed or go, go onto your hands or the wool around it. Um, but if you're just starting this and this is for fun, make sure that it's fun. Make sure it's not like biology because that's not fun. I mean, maybe to you it's fun. To me, <laughs> this is fun, fooling around. So I'm going to put you on pause for just a minute and then we're going to, actually, I'll just do this. So what we're doing now, and I might have to put this a little bit closer, is he's going to put, Jay is going to mix our color, we're trying to do the, more of that purple for the candy hearts, into one container. I'm going to bring you over here. Yeah. He's going to um, mix the color. We're, we've got the Cushing one going first. We're trying a Cushing and then we're trying one of the acid dyes because um, I'm not sure which color is going to be closer to the real candy lilac that we want. So he's putting um, some of the dye powder into that back pan. Right, so we're using pans that are what? Stainless steel or enamel? Galvanized. Galvanized, not stainless steel. No, this is stainless steel. Okay. And yeah, this is enamel. Enamel. So which yeah. is the one that you're not supposed to use? Well, Galvanized. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So pick pans from Goodwill or Savers or whatever that are either, enamel is the first choice and that, or restaurant quality stuff like casserole dishes, all that stuff is fine. We love this white tub and we love the white casserole dishes because you really see the color of the dye. If, as you can imagine, if you're looking at um, your pan and it's like um, silver, you're not seeing the true color. But when we're looking at it against white, we are seeing the true color. So he's mixing that powder into that pan there. A very small amount. How much water is in that pan? Um, about two cups in there. Right, so a very small amount. He's just getting the color ready. Right. And then when the color is ready, he's going to pour it into our tub. And it should make a nice purple. It's not always exactly. Yep, yeah, I got it. Here we go. So we're going to pour it in there. And then I'm going to put the camera back on the table so you can see us putting the wool in. Yeah, we're going to put the vinegar in here too. So you want to put the vinegar in twice. You want to put it while it soaks as like one of the wetting agents so it really takes to the wool. And then you want to put it, we always put it in here too. Um, just to be sure that it's sticking the best change that it can the stick. PH. Yeah, to change the pH. Yeah, you know, we did use pH strips at one point, and then we lost them. Um, <laughs> and no matter what we did that was different, the pH was always right. So either Murphy was, like, on our side, or, or we were lucky. Do you want more purple in now, or? We're deciding how much purple we want for the lilac. So it's very hard to say. I'd say don't do too much, because we can always add more later. That's enough. So now we're going to stir it with our sticks. Have you got the sticks? Yeah. 
All right, and then we'll throw some in. If you're starting to die, this is like the Bible of dying. Gene Shepard, this book, Prepared to Die. Um, there's lots of dying books. They're all great. Rug Hooking Magazine puts out a few dying books. There's a lot of spiral bound dying books. There's a lot of dying books that come with swatches. We're talking about like the 80 to 100 and something dollar range when you've got swatches that come with it. Um, it depends on how into it you are and how much you want to invest. But in terms of just the basics, um, we're giving you the basics. And I took a class in dying and these were the basics that we started with. But when I read this book, it gives me more ideas, more techniques, um, just more inspiration. And if you're the kind of person that second guesses yourself every five seconds when you're doing something new, it's good to have a book like this to constantly refer to. You do it a couple of times and then you say, all right, I got the basic principle of it. Um, if I leave something out, it's going to be obvious because the wool isn't going to be dyed correctly. So then you would over dye it or try again or whatever, but it's, it's not, um, it's not rocket surgery. Did you get that one dirty? Yep. Okay. Sure. So somebody was touching the wool with, um, already purple fingers, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to throw in like, you want to do what? Three at once? Yeah, that's what I had. All right. So let's do three at once yeah. and we're going to try to throw them in at the same time. They're going to wet the floor plenty. So which color is this? This is the purple. This is um, Cushing's Bright Purple. Okay, so I've got these guys here. I've got three pieces of wool, and yeah, they're not yeah. super. I'm going to drop them in um, and start stirring right away. Uh, don't don't um, put them flat and put them in because they pack against each other, and then they don't get the color. So with something this size, this tub, we put them in, and then I think we're going to need more dye. And then we immediately, let's see though, yeah. we immediately start moving it around because we don't want any to settle <clears> into <throat> wrinkles and folds and valleys. Um, so we just keep moving it around. It doesn't have to be a two-person job. It's just easier and more fun. You see, it takes it right away. Yeah, right away. So and we don't want this that dark. Those conversation parts are not meant to be dark. I'm going to lift the camera up so we can see more into the pan right so it's getting dark and you know what i don't think that's the right color purple mm. um it looks too oh here comes teddy yeah i'm making a video ted um it's not a video about five nights at freddy freddy's Pits. um okay so i think this is the wrong color purple so we're also using the potato masher which is a good way to move it around but we're going to put this on pause because i think this purple is too violet for what we want so we're going to um, put you on pause and then we're going to take out our other purple and see if we can get any closer to the color. Okay, so I just want to show you, I unplugged us over here. Um, what's going on that's making me unhappy is we've got this purple and it's not the right purple. So it is what it is. We're going to try a different purple. But one of the um, first things that you're going to wonder and think about is um, when do I take it out of the pan? And the general rule is you let it sit for an hour. We let it sit for about 10 seconds, um, which is typically what we do, not because we're rushed, but you know, when the, the wool will soak up every bit of color. So when you look into that pan, you see it's, it's getting very, very clear for wool that's been in there for a minute, right? It's almost, almost clear. So the reason that you leave your uh, wool in there for an hour to set is also, it's, it can be a temperature thing when you're dealing with blues um, and those, those kinds of values. Um, you know, the general rule again is leave it in there for an hour. We usually, we usually don't, we leave it in there until there's absolutely no color left in the pan. And if the wool is the color that we like it, or it's dark enough, um, that we're happy with it, then that's the point that we make a decision to pull it out. And if we have a lot of um, dye left over in the other little pan, we save those in mason jars or squirt bottles for another time. We save our extra stuff. We even try to recycle our water as we go pulling the bathtub water out and putting it into this pan. Otherwise we just... Um, hemorrhaging water. I mean, it's just so just much water. Just keep going. We'll spin it right now. Okay, great. So I'm going to turn over here. We're going to do the next step, which is... Well, we have rinse it. Yeah, we're going to rinse it. We'll get the, I need the sieve. That's another thing. Okay, it's done so we'll get it. All right. We need to get the... We get a sieve. We pull the wool out next. We put it into a sieve and just rinse it out with cold water. Um, it doesn't, Gene Shepard says, and I, I, I support everything he says because he's so much more knowledgeable than I am, but um, when people say that if you pour cold water on it, it shocks the wool and changes the color, that's never happened to me, that's never happened to Gene. Cold water, warm water, it doesn't matter. I just want to be sure there's no color coming off the dye. 
So even this, even though this is the wrong color purple for us for this project, we're going to use this purple, and we're either going to over dye it, spot dye it, use it for Irish heather, something like the Scottish heather, something like that. So um, we're just going to treat it the same way we would treat any wool because it's beautiful and it's a beautiful color. It's just not the right color. So he just took it out of the pan and he put it into the strainer, and we're just uh, rinsing it out. So we're rinsing it out with cold water. And I rinse it out. Can you turn the camera a little bit so it's facing me? My big butt is in there. Yep. So I take it out here, and then we have a salad spinner, um, which, if you don't know what that is, and I didn't until dying, um, it spins your salad, your lettuce. And it's perfect for us. Yeah, he did. So I put the, the stuff into the salad spinner. You can put a few pieces in, and it literally um, whips off, strains off, Centrifugal force at work. Take this money home. Teddy, get out. Um, the extra water. Now this one we tend to use. We usually have a second Tupperware thing because this is um, open on the bottom. It strains itself. So I'm just in this case because we don't have our second one out. Just put it in the sink and then I'm just spinning it. And it's taking out. It's very very easy to spin. Um, it doesn't really matter what size you have, and you don't have to have a salad spinner that strains as well. You know, you just pour, dump it out as you go, pour it out bit by bit. This one works great, and we're loving it. We found it at a Goodwill, so we grabbed it, and it works better than our regular salad spinner. So, I'm just checking it out to see how dry we are. And we're pretty dry, and the purple is quite good. The more I look at it, the more I think, is this the right color? <laughs> well, we'll try another purple just in case. So this is really the last step for us. We have dyed, we had the temperature right, right? Yep. What was it again? Between 150 and 160 usually. Okay. So he had that in the pan when he was mixing the color, poured the color into the pan that we were dyeing in, immediately started stirring it around. If you want a nice even solid color, you want to stir it around quickly. And we waited for the color, you can wait an hour, official. Or you can take it out when it's the right color for you and you don't want it to get any darker. Or you can take it out when there's no more dye in the water, there's nothing left to soak in. And then the next thing is rinse it out, rinse the extra color out, nothing was coming out, it's very color fast. And then right into the salad spinner, get all that extra water off, and then you're hanging it out to dry. So if it's summertime, a nice day, whatever, we'll probably put ours on the back porch even though it's winter. Um, sometimes we put it on an old record rack like a, a vinyl record rack in the in the shower and let it dry out there but it's quite it's quite dry already um can you think of anything i missed no it sounds like you got everything it's this is very basic but this is just to give you confidence if you're interested in dyeing i'm not going to show you us dyeing another color purple because there might be four more purples tonight before we get to sleep but okay. um but this is just very simple and very easy and if you have questions or there's something i missed add that to the thread to help other people um, but this is just a confidence builder for you to get started. You just need one packet of color, a little bit of wool, a little bit of vinegar. You don't need everything. You don't need the thermometer. You don't need everything. But you do need the basic principle of what you're doing in what order. And once you have that, you will see you will make some beautiful um, colors of wool. This is just solid wool. And in the future, we'll do some videos showing how to do painting on wool or spot dyeing or um, all the different effects that you can do once you have one color down. So we'll do all that stuff in the future. This was just a primer. Thanks for watching, and we will see you soon. That's Bye. it, right? <laughs> Bye.